In this video, we're going to talk about Newton's second law of motion. Now, if you remember, Newton's first law of motion told us that forces cause objects to speed up, slow down, or change direction. That is, forces cause objects to change their velocity. Now, Newton's second law of motion is a quantitative law of motion that describes how an object responds to an applied force. Now, precise experiments show that if you apply a force to an object, by either pushing on the object or pulling the object, so this will be the direction of the applied force, the object will respond by accelerating in the direction of the applied force. Now, force and acceleration are both vector quantities. That is, they have both magnitude and direction. Now, Newton's second law of motion relates the force acting on an object to its acceleration. So if you push or pull on an object with a constant force, the object's going to respond by accelerating at a constant rate. Now Newton's second law is what's known as a vector equation. That is, you have to take into account both the direction that the force acts and the magnitude of the force. Now you'll remember that acceleration is measured in units of meters per second squared and mass is measured in units of kilograms. Now, we're going to get into this more in a later video, but mass is a measurement of an object's resistance to a change in its state of motion. Another way to say that is that mass is a measurement of an object's inertia. Inertia is an intrinsic property of matter. So all things with mass resist a change in velocity. Now, before we get into the more rigorous aspects of Newton's second law, let's just look at some general principles that Newton's second law states. So let's begin by assuming that this object has a mass of exactly one kilogram. And what we're going to do to this object is we're going to apply a force to this object causing it to accelerate. Now let's suppose we can cause this object to accelerate at a rate of one meter per second per second or one meter per second squared. The question is how much force is required to cause this object with a mass of one kilogram to accelerate at a rate of one meter per second per second. Now to figure that out we're going to go directly to Newton's second law that says that if you add up the forces acting on an object it's going to equal the mass of the object times the acceleration. So if this object has a mass of one kilogram and I try to accelerate this object at a rate of one meter per second per second, or one meter per second squared, then the force required to cause this object to accelerate at this rate will be, I'll multiply one by one, so in this case one by one is just the number one, then I'm going to multiply the units out, a kilogram times a meter per second squared will work out to be a kilogram, times a meter per second squared. Now this kilogram meter per second squared shows up so frequently that we give it a special name. We call it a Newton, and we abbreviate it with a capital N. And so the force required to cause an object with a mass of one kilogram to accelerate at a rate of one meter per second per second is going to equal one Newton of force. So that's the definition of what a Newton is, the force required to cause an object with a mass of one kilogram to accelerate at a rate of one meter per second per second. Now suppose we have a similar object, but in this case we have a cylinder with a mass of two kilograms, and we're going to apply a force to this object by either pushing this object or pulling this object in this direction. Newton's second law says that the object's going to accelerate in this direction as well. Now suppose we want to get this object to accelerate at the exact same rate that we cause the previous cylinder to accelerate. So in this case, we're going to cause this object to accelerate at a rate of one meter per second per second. And again, this object has a mass equal to two kilograms in this case. We're going to use Newton's second law again to figure out the force required to cause this object to accelerate. So in this case, again, we're going to use the net force equals the mass of an object times its acceleration. And again, these are both vector quantities indicating that they have both magnitude and direction. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the mass of this object, which in this case is two kilograms, and we're going to multiply this by the rate at which we're trying to speed this object up, which in this case is one meter per second per second, or one meter per second squared. So this is going to work out to be two times a kilogram meter per second squared. And we said that a kilogram meter per second squared was a Newton. So in this case, the force required to cause this two kilogram object to accelerate at a rate of one meter per second squared is going to be two Newtons. Now these two examples demonstrate one of the important principles of Newton's second law, and that is the greater the mass of an object, the more force required to accelerate that object at the same rate. So keep this idea in mind, that the greater the mass of an object, the more force required to accelerate that object. Now I'd like to talk about another general principle of Newton's second law, and that is what happens if you try to change the velocity of an object very rapidly. So for example, again, let's say we have an object, and in this case we're going to apply a force to this object in this direction. So this is going to be the direction of the net force. Again, you know that the acceleration is going to be in the same direction as the net force. So let's suppose this object has a mass of exactly one kilogram. And in this case, I'm going to accelerate this object at a rate of two meters per second per second, or two meters per second squared. Now in the very first example, we figured out that the force required to cause an object to accelerate at one meter per second per second 
was exactly one Newton. Now what I'd like to show you is that when you try to increase the velocity of an object very rapidly, the force required to accelerate that same object is going to be greater. So to show that, we're going to apply Newton's second law again, which says that if you add up the forces acting on an object, it's going to equal the mass of the object times the acceleration. And remember that these are vector quantities. That's why I keep putting the vector arrows over both the force term and the acceleration term to keep reminding you that force is acting in the same direction that the object accelerates. So in this case, we still have an object with a mass of exactly exactly one kilogram, like in the very first example. But in this third case, we're going to accelerate this not at a rate of one meter per second per second, but a rate of two meters per second squared. So when you do this, you get one times two is two times a kilogram meter per second squared, which works out to be a Newton. So the force required to speed up an object twice as fast will be greater. So when you try to speed up an object twice as fast, it's, sort of, it's going to require twice the force. The faster you want to speed up an object, the more force required to speed up that object. And this first gets us into the last concept of Newton's second law. And that is the faster you try to speed up or slow down an object, the more force will be required to change the velocity of that object. Now in the next video, we're going to do some unit analysis, and then we're going to do a little bit more theoretical work with Newton's second law and learn how to apply Newton's second law in more than one direction at the same time.